Hey everybody, my name is Grant Bachoco, and I'm the writer, director, and co-producer of The Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd. Today, November 7th, 2006, marks the second year anniversary of the podcast debut of The Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd. And on behalf of my co-producer, Doug Price, and myself, we just wanted to thank all the loyal Dr. Floyd fans for making the show the amazing phenomenon it is. Uh, I thought it'd be fun today to rebroadcast episode 101, where it all began, and, uh, add a special director's commentary to it to give you a little insight to the recording. I hope you enjoy it. It's time once again for America's favorite show, The Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd, brought to you by drfloyd.com. Now, that opening theme music was created by Jody Whitesides. Uh, When we originally broadcast the show and started podcasting it, we used music from the soundtrack of Radio Land Murders. Uh, But when we started actually uh, seeing that people were actually downloading and listening to the show, we figured uh, we'd better get our own music. And so uh, Jody helped us out quite a bit with that. So uh, you can visit Jody at jodywhitesides.com. Now, at the time, uh, Doug, was, uh, who does the voice of Dr. Floyd, was living in Florida. So all of Doug's lines were recorded in uh, Florida, and then he would send the MP3s out to me, and uh, I would uh, piece them all together with my lines and uh, put the show together. Now, one of the uh, inventions mentioned uh, in this episode is a robot, and uh, that is a carryover from the public access TV show we did with these characters where uh, Dr. Steve made a robot that you could roll around the lake and fish from because uh, he kept thinking it was a rowboat. So we, uh, that was a little tribute to the old TV show. Hey, Dr. Floyd, I'm back. I brought chips with me. Oh, those will be wonderful for the party. We'd better mix up a nice dip to go along with them. No, Dr. Floyd, I brought chips, our faithful robot companion. <laughs> Oh, I see. Well, that sound effect is actually a sound effect we purchased from uh, Hanna Barbera. It was used in the uh, Jetsons, on, uh, and as some people have noticed, it was used in uh, episode of Futurama as well. It's the uh, the Jetsons car the starting to take we're off, we're and uh, we used it for several seasons as the voice of Chips. With this little cube, you can travel to any point in time or space. Wow, that sounds really cool. Just imagine, Dr. Grant, we can go right along with Columbus. Or we could go see how the Egyptians built the pyramids. Or we can... Go back to last Tuesday and make sure my cell phone bill gets paid on time? No, Dr. Grant. The time and space travel device must never be used for personal gain. Aw, shucks. We must make sure that this never falls into the wrong hands. The trouble it could cause... We set the show in Saddle River City, uh, which is actually a city in New Jersey, but it's a little tribute to uh, the band Bare Naked Ladies uh, for their version of of the song McDonald's Girl. Uh, So that's just why we set the show in Saddle River City, which is actually a real place, but we don't really consider uh, Saddle River City, New Jersey. It's sort of like Springfield. It's uh, an imaginary place. Saddle River's finest Girl Scout standing there with several boxes of Girl Scout cookies. However, unbeknownst to our heroes, the these were no ordinary Girl Scouts. These were evil fiends in disguise. They were none other than evil Dr. Steve, Dr. Floyd's arch nemesis, and his assistant, Fridget. No, oh, good afternoon, gentlemen. Would you like to see a presentation about our cookies? Well, Dr. Steve's amazing female cookies. voice there. Sure, come on in. And come in they did. The two Girl Scouts droned on and on about their cookies for hours. They droned on so long, in fact, that it put our heroes to sleep. As soon as they were all sleeping soundly, the two evil fiends dropped their disguises. Now's our chance, Fidget. Quick, grab the time and space travel And Fidget device. does not talk in this episode. He didn't talk, uh, I think, until the second or third episode, and, and even then he just laughed. The while our heroes continued on in their slumber. What? Diabolical plan. Now, uh, here's the three questions uh, that uh, we try to do every episode. Um, some episodes haven't had the three questions, but we try to do it every episode. And Minor Smith, uh, we've referenced him a few times as the show has gone on, and as far as anyone knows, he's still in that cave. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you so much for two great, wonderful years, and... Uh, we're going to continue working on the show, and uh, hopefully there will be two, four, six, eight, ten, twenty more wonderful years ahead of us. Uh, thanks again, everybody. <laughs>